Have you noticed there are specific moments when your usually distracted teenager suddenly opens up? Today, I'm going to reveal five powerful windows when your teenager's brain is naturally primed for connection. You'll learn exactly why these windows appear and how to leverage them effectively. But before we get to the five windows, we have to talk about three factors that typically block teenage attention. Once you understand these, you'll start to see opportunities for connection everywhere. Let's start with the first attention blocker, and this explains a lot about why teenagers typically tune us out. Your teenager's brain faces an overwhelming challenge every second. There are 11 million bits of information pouring in, but they can only process 60 of them. That's like trying to pour Niagara Falls through a drinking straw. When your teenager seems to tune out your important advice, it's not necessarily attitude. Their brain might be overloaded right now and not able to process anything else. Understanding this can change how you respond when they don't seem to be paying attention to you. So that's the first attentional block, limited processing capacity. But there's a second factor that can make this even more challenging. Picture a phone with too many apps running in the background. That's your teenager's brain during every single conversation. Just trying to focus on basic dialogue uses up almost all of their mental processing power. As you're attempting to bring up important topics, they have all these apps running in the background of their brain. They're worrying about that message they just got from their crush. They're processing drama with their friends. They're thinking about that test they have coming up. They're worrying about their own body and how it's changing. With all these background processes going on, they literally don't have capacity to think about your message. So now we've seen two factors that limit your teen's ability to pay attention to you, their total processing capacity and their background apps that they have running. But there's also a third factor that many parents don't realize is constantly impinging on their teenager's attention. Even when your teenager looks like they're just sitting there and doing nothing, their brain is actually working really hard. We can only process 60 bits of information per second, and that includes what's called interoceptive signals. These are messages coming up to our brain from our body, telling us things like, hey, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm scared, I don't feel comfortable right now, can we move? Teenagers are suddenly getting a lot more of these signals from their body, especially about emotional things or social situations. Hey, it feels like I'm being judged. Hey, I feel anxious right now. Hey, that guy's pissing me off. And as your teen's brain is trying to juggle all of these internal signals, they often don't have a lot of extra capacity to focus on you and what you're saying to them. So these are the three factors that limit your teen's ability to pay attention to you. There's that internal processing power. They can only process 60 bits out of 11 million. There's those background mental apps that are constantly running. And there's also this internal monitoring going on, these signals from the body that are coming up to the brain. This helps to understand why it's so hard to get through to teenagers, but here's where this gets interesting. There are actually five specific situations where these attentional blocks naturally fade away, leaving opportunities to connect meaningfully with your teenager. Let's look at these one at a time. You've probably noticed this strange phenomenon. Your teen who barely talks at home suddenly opens up in the car. This isn't random. It's their brain finding ideal conditions for connection. Instead of having to worry about things like their body language, eye contact, social pressure, how they're coming across to others, they can just focus on watching the world go by and not being judged. There's also a clear end point to the conversation so they know that it won't go on forever. This explains why some of our deepest conversations often happen during drives. So that's our first attentional window, the car ride connection, but there's another important window that opens up at a very specific time of day. Something remarkable happens after 10 p.m. Your usually closed off teen might wander into your room or text you deep questions. Their overwhelmed brain finally settles down because social pressure is lifted. Their performance anxiety fades. The need to worry about what other people think about them all goes away. And as they start to relax, these emotions come up that need processing. So far, we've talked about two important attentional windows, car rides and late nights. Those situations both reduce those barriers to attention that we talked about earlier. And there's a third situation that might surprise you. Picture trying to have a serious talk with your teenager at the dinner table. They're squirming, they're distracted, they're barely listening to you. But take that exact same conversation on a walk 
and suddenly they're engaged, they're present, they're giving you full sentence answers. This isn't just restlessness. Movement itself actually helps organize the chaos in your teenager's brain. This is why some of the best conversations often happen while you're walking the dog, shooting hoops, making a meal together, going grocery shopping, learning to drive, even folding laundry. If you find yourself reaching an impasse with your teenager, try shaking things up and getting them moving. So we've looked at three important windows to connect with your teenager, car rides, late nights, and times when we're moving. These all work by limiting those reduced attention factors that we talked about earlier. And there's a fourth window that's very specific that a lot of parents miss out on. Many parents miss out on the golden window that happens 20 minutes after your teenager experiences any kind of a win. Imagine your teenager just scored in their soccer game, nailed a big presentation, got an A on an assignment, mastered a TikTok dance. When these moments happen, their usually overwhelmed brain shifts into a unique state. Self-doubt quiets down, they feel more confident, their defenses naturally subside, and they're open to connection. Don't waste this window with criticism or pressure. Just enjoy it and be open to wherever the conversation goes. So we've discovered four powerful moments to connect with a teenager, car rides, late nights, movement, and victory moments. And there's one more that might be the most surprising of all. Your brain does something fascinating after disappointment. It seeks connection to help process what went wrong. This doesn't happen during the intense moment. It happens right after, in the calm, after that emotional storm. When your teenager faces a friendship betrayal, a devastating breakup, a public embarrassment, their brain temporarily shifts into a different state. Their constant background processes all pause. Their usual defenses lower. They're not looking for solutions. They're seeking support to make sense of what happened. So those are the five key moments when your teenager's brain is open to connection. Car rides, late nights, when you're moving after a victory, or when they're processing a disappointment. If you found this helpful, be sure to follow our channel for more science-backed insights about the teenage brain.